Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Godzilla podcast. Alright, I finally did it. I finally had the perfect moment this past weekend to be able to enjoy something that I've been waiting for just the right time. And it had to do with finally, after so many years, and after purchasing this a couple of months back, finally seeing the original return of Godzilla film the 1984 film that was forever lost it seemed all these years from us consumers here on the US so uh, the reason for it was because there's a long storied history with regards to this film not being here in the United States only available outside the world I covered it on one of my past videos one of my popular ones back then unfortunately it was one of those videos that was purged because of all the crazy stuff that Toho Studios and Legendary Pictures were going through a couple of years back um, with regards to their copyright strikes. Anyways, long story short, the finally lightning struck whatever was the case with regards to the notorious rights to this film being locked away somewhere probably in some shoebox. Now they were finally released last year and very much so thanks to the company called Kraken uh, with regards to them being able to negotiate a new set of rights to the DVD Blu-ray it was released here in the US so it was so crazy to hear such great news last year regarding this I was so excited and so when it was released I think it was in October or so of last year if I'm not mistaken I purchased it right away but I wanted to wait for the right moment to see this film so this weekend was a perfect moment for it I saw it and here is my review of this legendary film it says so specifically on the back of the DVD slash blu-ray cover lost for a generation absolutely so that assessment is 100 percent correct because everything else that i had seen about this movie my favorite movie of all regarding the godzilla world everything has been the infamous godzilla 1985 film the, no, the notorious heavily edited multiple cheesy moments huge product placements involving dr pepper just all around bad editing of the much better Return of Godzilla film. So it is now in my possession and I couldn't wait to find the right moment and that's when I found it this past week. And so here is my official review of the Return of Godzilla, the Godzilla 1984 film. Popped it into my DVD player. I uh, got some of my infamous, my famous wings that I love getting and then also some fries and then Dr. Pepper and I was finally able to witness it. The first thing that stood out though and again huge absolutely huge praise to Kraken releasing for doing this it seems like they took the time and the effort to create a newly I guess um, what do you call it a newly recorded version of the film in English because previously I mean I know the Godzilla 1985 film by heart so much I know the voices of the characters I just played during certain scenes that's just ingrained in me because I've seen that movie so many times so when I was first watching the first couple of scenes and then it's, they started talking in English right away I was glad I was so surprised I thought it was gonna be something where I would have to read the subtitling on the bottom which I don't mind doing per se but at the same time, it distracts me from the scenes. I would much rather be able to watch the scene, the entire scene, rather than stare at letters as I'm watching the scene and then trying to, I guess, absorb all of it in. But I noticed that a lot of the voices were different. So that told me right away that Kraken releasing must have done something in terms of, let's say, a whole new audio dubbing of sorts or... There was, I was reading some information, there was an English dubbed version that was only available overseas for the longest time. If that was the one that was finally released here, someone let me know. But either way though, I was so happy that the movie had this English dubbed version. So, right off the bat too, I noticed some more prominent scenes, long lost to me at least, deleted scenes that I had not come across after all these years. Again, I was only witness to the Godzilla 1985 heavily edited version. This one though was able to restore, I think close to 20 minutes or so, 
of these quote-unquote lost scenes that I have never seen before so it was quite a delight to see them and at the same time see how much they added whole new scenes and then at other points it was extended versions of previous scenes like for example right from the beginning whenever the ship is attacked uh, there's a little bit more edits there showcasing the attack and then also whenever that camera I'm sorry the yeah the photographer finds the ship and then goes into it and is attacked by that mutant louse there's more prominent scenes there too and I love right from the very beginning to see that this movie was in pristine, crystal clean, clear condition. Again, I was so used to the Godzilla 1985 film. It was horribly transitioned over to VHS. It was almost like they took the worst copy of, let's say, a 35mm film or whatever film it was shot in. The oldest, archived, just unclean, just faded away type copy. And then transferred it over uh, to VHS. Anchor Bay did such a bad job with regards to that. But here, they used a super clean, absolutely beautiful transition. Now, is it like 4K material on the spot? Uh, just absolutely perfect picture? No. I mean, obviously, like this film was done back in uh, the mid 80s. So even uh, if they found the most pristine copy to work from, it's not going to be in the best conditions. But compared to what it was before, at least with the Anchor Bay VHA vers VHS version, it is a clear night and day difference. So that was it was so giddy for me to see this movie finally in such pristine condition on my big screen TV. But yes, going back to the scenes and what they were expanded on, of course, the the ones that were removed were all the scenes involving Raymond Burr's character and the U.S., I guess, dialogue, the government scenes, the ones there that looked to be in some kind of Pentagon-like military office. All of those were removed. I thought it was going to be awkward at first, but then I realized that it wasn't really necessary all those other scenes that played out on the US side they were just simple add-ons that could easily be trimmed without impacting the main story overall and if anything it allowed so much more beautiful scenes especially involving the scientists like the main scientist the researcher the one who had his parents lost in the original Godzilla attack and who dedicated his life to trying to figure out Godzilla overall the one that created that uh, saw that seismic sound something that would help attract Godzilla his scenes involved more intricate intimate moments more I guess character moments between him it was also interesting to see far more scenes involving the photographer and his fight with the editors that was that was great to see too um, this movie it, it it's it's great because you get to see again a serious uh, version of Godzilla attacking and the ramifications of it and how the characters would really interact in the real world of such an attack from the lowest I guess a totem pole to the highest to the government uh, like the prime minister those I mean it showed those beautiful reactions but yes going back to those scenes and what were added on the thing with the editor that was really great too I love the extra scenes too involving the prime minister and how he was handling the situation with Godzilla how um, the extended scenes too with him talking to the other ambassadors in this case from the Russian side and then from the American side and how there was more scenes about them pressuring him to use nuclear attacks there was also another new scene for me the one involving where he supposedly the prime minister came back from a private conversation with the US president and then that way he was able to tell and explain the situation and let them know that the nuclear attacks was not an option never was going to be an option all that great stuff was just fantastic absolutely fantastic character building moments that were sorely missing from the Godzilla 1985 film another great scene was the uh, the the most probably the most controversial one was the switch that the Godzilla 1985 film did with that hidden Russian um, missile compound that was within that heart that boat in the harbor so of course in the Godzilla 1985 film it was done where the Russian in his dying moments was trying to ensure that the missile was launched on Godzilla thus to protect his nation 
but in this one in the original version it was so that he was preventing it and I love the little add-in line that was that boat and the missile compound there had a failsafe of sorts where if anything was done to it and it was destroyed in any way whatsoever it would automatically launch the missile the presumption being that whatever was destroying the boat would be a danger to that area and to Russia if that was this within the same area in this case of course the destruction being from Godzilla coming up on the harbor but of course in in the original version it was him trying to prevent it doing everything he could and, and dying valiantly because of it I saw that deleted scene and I say deleted scenes again but these are scenes I've never seen before but it, I saw that scene where he was almost there and then an explosion right next to him just pretty much ended his life but he was in his dying moments trying to prevent that 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 missile launch from happening because of the fail safe that was fantastic to see that too to to see um, those great moments come alive for the first time one of the other moments that I was really giddy about was I finally got to see the infamous uh, scene too where Godzilla walks by the um, mirror type building the one that has like 50 floors or so but all of it just mirror I thought though there was supposed to be a moment there where he stares at the mirror and is realizing that he's seeing himself or wondering what he's seeing but this scene did not have that so if someone can point that out on the comments was that ever truly in the original version or was that clipped even now with this release or was it just something that I misread somewhere in the past but I was really really hoping for that moment because that would have probably been one of the best character moments of Godzilla where he's wondering and mulling you can almost like imagine him in his brain the wheels clicking wondering what's going on like what's he staring at is he realizing it's him is he thinking it's another enemy uh, not realizing that it's all along just a mirror image he would not have any ability to know how to react to a mirror because in his world being in the sea he would never have seen something like that in terms of a mirror but I was so hoping that that scene would have it but no it did not but yes other fantastic moments too um, in that case the creation of that uh, weapon not weapon but the um, sonic device that sound device that the scientists the photographer and his assistant were creating I love that they were able to showcase more of how that worked um, also the attacks that Godzilla did I realized again this is me from being such a huge fan of the Godzilla 1985 film I know how those scenes play out almost scene by scene so I saw how things were tweaked uh, for the 1985 version compared to the original like the Super X coming in for the first time you I, I got to see that it did not fire first it was actually Godzilla I think that fired his breath first and then it was them firing back so it, it was great it was really good to see all of that great information all of those fantastic scenes for the first time obviously my love for the film in terms of the overall review it's like four out of four stars it's always been because this is my first and was my first Godzilla film that I ever saw as a young kid and that's what introduced me to the world of Godzilla and now finally 2017 I got to see the original version in all of its glory just a grand time I'm, I'm still giddy to be able to have all these uh, after all these years finally that weekend to see this movie and then and then enjoy it in all of its glory plus too it still pulls my heart towards the end whenever of course Godzilla goes into the volcano um, I noticed there were still more tweaks involving his uh, final cry which is in a weird way much better in the Godzilla 1985 version whatever that scream was that was used there was much more heartbreaking but in this case it played out almost the same but yes that still pulled at my heart overall seeing that final moment knowing that of course he would come back but at the same time um, in his case he's just uh, 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 the way it plays out still is beautiful he's still just an innocent animal 
just reacting to his environment and in that case because of him being so destructive he had to be led to his death at least what they thought was his death not knowing of course being dumb that the bombs would be there that he shouldn't be stepping on the ledge but not knowing that for the better that all of this is happening all these forces are being played against him and then he ends up dying or going into the volcano uh, to be stopped thereafter that still pulled at my heart after all these years being able to see that moment even then uh the 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 prime the moment another tweak from the 1985 version because it doesn't have the remember voiceover instead it's the prime minister staring longingly i guess with a sad face almost tears realizing as well what's going on I did like that the ending focused more on that part too. But yes, fantastic film. Loved it. Loved every moment of it. A uh, huge, great review. If you haven't had a chance, order it. Go to Amazon. Go wherever you shop. You'll find it there. Uh, Godzilla 1984, The Return of Godzilla, now available for purchasing. It should be a cheap price too on Amazon because these films generally are. And again, huge kudos to Kraken releasing for going through all that trouble of getting the rights who knows how tangled they were uh, w uh, with regards to getting um, this thing released but they were able to do it and if they used a whole new version of dubbing even better if they used an older copy even better as long as they were able to, sh to, to have it here in the US my hats off to them for going through all that trouble it's the only film out of the entire franchise that has been withheld from American release for all these years. I couldn't believe the luck. Like, the only film I ever wanted to be released was being withheld. And then now it's here and I finally saw it. So fantastic, fantastic stuff. So anyways, again, four stars, four out of four, fantastic film. Highly recommend that you watch it. If you haven't had a chance, order it now. Uh, you won't regret it. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.